This is KGW News at Noon. When I first saw it, I, I, couldn't, I, I didn't realize how, how it could have got that big so fast. It, it got pretty big, I guess it's due to the wind. Yeah, high winds are causing problems for California firefighters trying to stop two big wildfires from spreading. Tens of thousands of people have been ordered to leave their homes as the flames threaten dozens of buildings. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. I'm Ashley Korslin. The two main fires crews are tackling are the Kincaid Fire north of San Francisco and the Tick Fire north of Los Angeles. NBC's Jennifer Bjorklund is in Santa Clarita with the latest. Embers swirling out of burned out homes here north of Los Angeles are taking on a life of their own in seeding new fires blocks away. In fact, this house flared up three times overnight. Fire crews came to put out those hot spots, not to save it, but to prevent it from spewing more burning debris into the wind. The number of homes and the acreage estimate, no one wants to guess. And for now, all hands are on the fire lines trying to stop the advance of the flames. We have a destructive wildfire on our hands here, so it's very important that the residents here heed evacuation orders and get out of the area as quickly as possible. To the north, fire scorched nearly 15 square miles of wine country, but crews are getting some containment lines set there. The combination of high winds from the inland deserts and single digit humidity is a disaster for the Golden State. The break will come when the wind shifts and brings ocean breezes and moisture on shore, relief that can't come soon soon enough for firefighters and homeowners. So many of those homeowners not sure what they'll come back to when they repopulate these neighborhoods. In Santa Clarita, California, Jennifer Bjorkland, NBC News. And let's get right to Chris McGinnis, who's tracking the conditions in California. Chris, give us an update on what firefighters are dealing with. Well, all of this color that you see behind me representing various degrees of fire weather watches or high wind warnings or a combination of both. And this, of course, is because of the very low humidities and the offshore winds that continue to blow, not only in the Bay Area, which you see here, but as we go down into Southern California as well, in and around the Los Angeles area. So they're going to continue to deal with this. I'm going to step off camera here for just a second so I can get this animated. I want to take you down to Southern California. Again, you can see in and around Los Angeles uh, fire weather warnings ongoing through most of the day today. Closer to home, nothing like that to deal with. But what we are watching is the cloud cover building in. You can see over the last 12 hours, we woke up to some sunshine this morning. We still have a couple of sun rays out there right now, but off to the north and west, a couple of sprinkles now showing up on radar. And eventually we think some of that may try to work its way through the metro area over the next three to six hours. But uh, outside of that sprinkle chance this afternoon, actually the weekend forecast looks pretty good, not only through the weekend, but beyond. We've got Halloween on the calendar now on the seven day. We'll check that forecast out coming up in just a bit. All right, Chris, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, family, friends, and colleagues honored Maryland Congressman Elijah Cummings at a funeral service this morning. An American flag was draped over his casket and thousands packed into that church in Baltimore. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and former Presidents Bill Clinton and Barack Obama were there. Cummings' widow gave a passionate speech. So I just want to tell you that it also wasn't easy in the last months of his life because he absolutely was in pain. But get this, he was a walking miracle. Do you know that he was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness more than 25 years ago? He was given six months to live more than 25 years ago. And he kept going, he kept fighting. He kept Cummings died last week at the age of 68 from complications you heard his widow talking about long-term health issues. Indonesian investigators have released their final report on the deadly Lion Air plane crash. The Boeing 737 went down into the Java Sea last October, shortly after takeoff. The report says the plane crashed partly because the pilots were never told how to respond to malfunctions with the Boeing 737's anti-stall system. That system automatically forced the plane to nosedive. The report also cited aircraft design flaws and maintenance problems. 189 people died. The FAA has grounded the 737 jets in the U.S. since March. Boeing has been working to make safety updates to its anti-stall system. 
Well, back here in Oregon, three teenagers accused of murdering a 65 year old man in the St. John's neighborhood will appear in court this afternoon. Police say two of the suspects are 15 year olds. The other is 14. You may remember back on October 14th, Ricky Malone Sr. was found shot on North Mohawk Avenue near Bank Street. He later died from his injuries. It wasn't until yesterday morning that Police arrested the teenagers. People in the neighborhood say the crime is disturbing, especially given how old those suspects are. It's shocked. Um, it just blows my mind. I, I work with kids, so I know what they're capable of, but it just to, to commit the act. And it, it, for me, it's like it was a school night. It was a Sunday night. They have school in the morning. They, what, what were they possibly doing out? Well, Mike Benner is covering the story for us today. He will bring us more coming up on KGW News at 4 o'clock. Meanwhile, Malone's family has set up a GoFundMe page, and so far it's raised more than $4,000. I want you to take a look at your screen. Portland police asking for your help to find this stolen three month old rose breasted cockatoo. Police say the bird is named Charlie and is worth $2,200. They say a man took it from the exotic bird store called Bird Hut, which is on Southeast Division. This happened yesterday afternoon. The store's owners say Charlie will only survive a couple days without their care because the bird is bottle fed. The suspect is a white man between 35 and 40. He has black hair. He was wearing a black hood sweatshirt and jeans and had a light backpack. If you know who the suspect is, call Portland Police. New at noon, a big win for the LGBTQ community in Oregon. Governor Kate Brown signed an executive order just a few hours ago. That order bars state agencies, including law enforcement, from discriminating on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. It also requires state agencies to add a third non-binary gender option to documents. Governor Brown says the new law will help make Oregon a more inclusive and welcoming place for everyone. I truly believe that they're my angels. <laughs> That Vancouver woman got to meet the two Clackamas County Sheriff's employees who helped her this month when she got lost in the woods. Keenan Grana was hiking the Fish Creek Mountain Trail when she got lost. She's not an experienced hiker and she says she got cold and tired. She was also out of cell phone range. Thankfully, though, after several tries, she got through to two community service officers with Clackamas County. There she is hugging one of them. They stayed on the phone with her for two hours. They pinpointed her location, then helped guide her out with an assist from search and rescue crews. They encouraged me, they prayed with me, they made me feel like a fighter. They brought back the fight in me when I felt like I was too scared to move. I was thinking if my daughter had been lost, I would hope that somebody would be on the phone with her, like Sherry and I, where we really care Sure Keenan made it to deputies just before midnight and get this those officers are going to start volunteering with transitional youth that is where Keenan works that is really neat they say they just really love helping people